Hello, y'all. So I did not think that I was going to be doing no reviews no more after the season finale. It was so horrible. I didn't even bother even darn on giving my thoughts on that darn on last uh, episode of Bad Boys L.A. But now they done came out with the auditions, right? And child, what? why was the auditions more entertaining than darn on half of the episodes over there at darn on Chasing L.A.? I was like, well, shit, they darn on, the way that they cutting up and shit, honey, the auditions is a key key. And maybe if they told the folks that, you know, that this was going to be a show within itself, honey, a lot of people would have behaved a little bit better because they would have been under the guise of they were still going to be seen in some capacity and we would have had a longer series because these motherfuckers only got two episodes. They done cut up so much that we only get two op uh, two episode auditions. Honey, this really could have been a 10 episode uh, season within its damn self how entertaining this shit was. But then we start off with the fact that these girls were an hour late. You know, they already had some folks waiting out there as early as 2 o'clock in the morning. The auditions ain't until like um, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. These hoes don't arrive to start the auditions until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm just discussing stuff that just randomly stuck out to me. Um, then they had various people stripping and fighting each other on the spot to try and secure a slot. Um, I don't mention some folks that have waited as long as eight hours. The first round of auditions is held by Really B, Relly B, D aka Darrell, Anthony, and Darren going um Curtis. I think Curtis got real <laughs> the child. Curtis was a good sport because Curtis, I didn't see Curtis actually having much decision making in the shit. Like I would have really seen, I would have really loved to see Curtis get to do more of what darn on Blueface ended up doing during the second round of auditions. Like we didn't really see Curtis being able to really get his input in like that. He had to darn on see the guy stripping all that. It's like, no. but Curtis was a good sport nonetheless, child. Um, let me see. Fights happening before folks got into the building. Um, Prince is in the auditioning line from Love and Hip Hop. We'll talk more about him in episode two. Honey, y'all won't have too long because honey, we only got two episodes to do, y'all. And I done seen both of them. And then I seen a couple of the folks that talked to Storm Monroe. Um, the first is the girl. I didn't get her name, but I will try to include that video down below. It was three of the people that was in the audition. The heavyset dude, the guy with the green dreads, and the androgynous chick. Um, the one that got into the fight with the dude four times her size. And they both got it scored out. But then they... Ooh! Hold on to that. Because they end up bringing old dude back in the building. But she didn't get brought... See, there was a lot of darn one... Um, discrimination going on as well. Now, I ain't like that motherfucking shit. Now, Natalie, I understand you fucked up the first time and you don't want to bring no more Anthony's in, but it's like, honey, you you, you was discriminatory towards the chicks that looked look more like Gutter, and Gutter was the one that really made the show for season one. Like, like now, now, bitch, don't do that. Because Gutta was the, the main draw that really kept us throughout season one, but I noticed a lot of motherfuckers that was looking like Gutta now, she wasn't all the way discriminatory. She did let a couple girls in, this, that, and the third. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. But others, I felt like, especially on the... Was not getting the not getting the just treatment. I, I get to that in a moment. But then we had... Um, yeah, I seen some of them. And like I said, I include that link to Storm and Rose channel. Then we had, why does Jonathan got... Um, why did Jonathan have the monkey there? And on that note, I'm going to take time to get my breakfast in for the day. Shout out to Ben and Jerry's. After six years, I done finally found the non-dairy ice cream that doesn't taste like damn cardboard. And the, and the magical ingredient is, I never heard of this before, sunflower milk. I tried non-dairy ice cream that was made with coconut and soy-based products, and it just don't be hitting. They done a fine, and I've even had Ben and Jerry's before, but I think I had the vanilla version. This cookies and cream, you it literally tastes like what I uh, what ice cream. Well, it literally tastes like ice cream. 
for y'all that don't know, I suffer from Crohn's disease. I have a high, you know, lactose intolerant. High amounts of, you know, dairy can put me in the hospital. So, I try my best to stay away from, like, milk whenever I can. So, I have not had regular milk in over 10 years. Cheese is still a daily... I, I still battle with cheese. Every now and again, I try to dabble into the vegan cheese. That's the only time I dibble and dabble in dairy is with cheese. But I try to opt for, like, you know, vegan butters and, you know, dairy-free ice cream and shit like that. But anyways, moving back on. Then we got, what else? We Why was the monkey there? I was like, why is the Boona Foods darn on second cousin once removed at the audition? Then we had Janisha, a.k.a. John. Oh, Janisha John, who is the knockoff of Boo Boo Kitty. I was like, who the hell is Janika, Janisha, Janika? Damn. Ja, Janisha John. Like, I can't stand when a bitch has a, has a first name for a last name. Like, who does that? That's like Milan Christopher. Oh, here darn gone car mats want to call me in the morning, bitch. I y'all get y'all car payment next week, goddammit. Let me finish my damn review so I can go ahead and give y'all this darn gone car note for uh, next month, y'all. But anyways, um That's like Milan Chris for having a darn gone uh a first name for a last name, child. But yeah, she was doing the interviews. And then I noticed several people from the cast of Rookies, one actually made it to the second round of auditions, um, was on there. Sean Dion, we'll talk about him more. And I'm going to include some clips at the end of stuff that stuck out to me. Um, a montage of clips that was just a kiki or stuff that stuck out to me. But I seen Sean, um, cute ass, he was in the audition line as well. And I'm hearing that there was two sets of audition lines. Like, that's why we didn't see Sean, Dion, and them. Um, we didn't see the star of Rookies go through Anthony and them first. Like, we've seen several of the other people who went through Anthony, um, Curtis, and Relly B. But people like Sean, Dion, they automatically got to go to the second round of auditions just off the riff. But some folks were not aware of that. And then I see Dargon Porn Star Knockout. Honey coming out as Big Stutter. Honey, he is really a, I, I mean, I knew he was feminine, but I did not know he was a flaming butch queen, honey. Like, honey, his voice is like 10 times higher than mine. So like, I know the girls be fit. Like, fate, um, Porn Star fame is very feminine. But he still has like the deep voice. Honey Knockout has a very darn on high key voice. I was like, oh my goodness. Not that darn on Knockout is a whole borderline drag queen outside of darn on porn production child. But Knockout, aka Big Stunner, he didn't make it through. And once again, none of the porn stars made it through, child. I guess they said, uh-uh, y'all ain't going to be having sex, so, <laughs> you know, in the house, left and right, y'all ain't going to be trying to make no productions on our damn dime. There were several more porn stars that I seen came through as well. Uh, y'all know my eyes lit up because, honey, the porn connoisseur recognized damn near everybody, child, that came through. The guy with the dreadlocks who done have made it through the door a couple times. Like I said, there was some bullshit going on with these damn auditions, child. But Knockout was one of the first porn stars that came on through the audition. But he had several of his fellow darn going um, adult entertainers behind him, child. But moving on. Then we got Wheelchair Tony. And I was like, why is we in the wheelchair audition? And like, are y'all trying to be the next day on Rolling Ray? Purr. I was like, uh uh. We only got one bitch that can give us darn on purr tease, honey. We only got one wheelchair gangster, and that's motherfucking darn on rolling way, bitch. And how about he wasn't the only one that was a paralegic, paraplegic, paraplegic. <laughs> Y'all know that word trips me up every goddamn time. Goddamn. Y'all put it down below. What's the word? 
and my will of voice from Dargon Chase in Atlanta. What's the word? Give me the word. Paralegic, paralegic, paralegic or whatnot. But he wasn't the only one that came through. There was a more feminine version that was more on par with Miss Dargon Rolling Ray that made it through the second round of auditions. Well, he made it to the second round as well. But it was confusing because they kept sending people this way and that way, and we didn't know, and the way that they was talking, we didn't know whether people made it through or not. They was like, uh-uh, to the door. Okay, you go over to the left. So we we had a thought that some people who was told to go to the left was going to the next round of auditions, but we didn't see them in the next round of auditions. And then folks who we thought got sent to the door, they made it to the second round of auditions. But the way that the judges was talking, it made it seem like they didn't make it. So that was the confusion of it all. Then we had um, Rika and Ken Doll. I got to check out. I think I follow her already, but Rika and Ken Doll. Honey, her ass is beautiful in and out. Darn going to drag. She came dressed up in a suit and everything. And then they was asking people to do the most ridiculous stuff. Like she said she was a drag queen. And they told her to do something on the spot. It's like, okay, girl ain't got no stitch of makeup on. She ain't got on no heels. You don't necessarily know what type of drag queen she is. You don't know whether she's just a looks queen. You don't know if she gives you a lip sync. Well, hell, you can't tell the bitch to lip sync for her life. It ain't no music to lip sync to. So, like, I didn't understand that. And I don't think she made it to the second round. Like, that was fucked up. Like... Once again, how in the hell is she supposed to show you drag queenism and she ain't in drag? Like, she she had a full suit and everything on with her pretty self. And they told her to do a little performance factor. I was like, okay, not all drag queens. See, this is why I say these girls, when they think of drag drag queens, they think of RuPaul's Drag Race. They think everybody supposed to be able to, to uh, do all sorts of twirls and uh spins and dips and all that and it's like not every darn going drag queen is a part of ballroom not every drag queen is a, is a performance queen you do have drag queens that just serve face you have drag queens that do sewing you have drag queens that lip sings to more so ballads like aretha franklin whitney houston adele uh you know artists that don't require all the the theatrics like not everybody who's a drag queen is going to be performing to Beyonce or, you know, J-Lo or Ariana Grande. Like, you do have drag queens that are more so just beauty type of queens. So it's like, why did they have another darn person there that would, because it was like all these feminine type of people that's coming through the door it's like they really should have had uh, like a, a somebody like a gutter K. And, and see, this is why gutter was missed. Because it was very imperative that they needed a gutter type to now go and, you know, give a fair chance to all the androgynous cheeks that was coming through the damn door. But, but moving on, moving on, child. Matter of fact, I don't know why they don't come out with one strictly for the girls, honey. Like, um, once again, now, I want my motherfucking credit, Natalie, none, because you over there darn on known for stealing shit and not citing the sources. Now, bitch, at the minimum, you need to give me a darn on, uh, when you darn on take this idea, because, hell, you, you took the darn on idea from bad boys. Now, they, now, some people came to your defense and said you was, you was doing it even before, um, old boy, but his shit just started off first. But I know damn well nobody came up with the top, uh, the concept of the next T-Girl. Uh, I mean, the top T-Girl. So, for the trans sisters, because trans are not... We we have yet to have a show for the darn gone T-Girls, really. So, it's like, you can come up with a concept like this and call it the, the, the top T-Girl. Or, you know, the BCD, which stands for the baddest cross-dresser. And it's a play on words because you got B, C, D, the alphabets in alphabetical order, and then it stands for baddest cross-dresser. So for the ones who don't identify as trans, 
but are very feminine, like Gutter Cage, like Rick and Ken Doll, and all the other ones that didn't necessarily fit the bad boy instead they they was giving more so bad bitch a clock and I'm here. <laughs> Honey, that was giving me more so, you know, Sasha Fields, Darn going Navy. They was giving me Barbie Gang. They was giving me uh Beehive. They wasn't giving me darn on bad boy. They was giving me bad girl, honey. So it's like, why don't you come out with a show called the BCD? And once again, if y'all see that shit, if they end up putting BCD, honey, Diva Wild wants my credit. Guess what? Darn on this video serves as proof of darn on intellectual property. I'm not expensive in my Kim Burrell's voice. I'm very affordable. Hell, just let me come on the show and darn gonna host a couple episodes. Hell, get a girl up out the damn ghetto, child. Let me darn on be one of the judges or whatnot. So let me work in the background. You know, I got a marketing degree. So, honey, Lemmy, Lemmy, however you pronounce your name, honey, we, we can work something out. Natalie, no, we can, we can work something out now. But moving on, child. And then there, there was this boy called David, little small frame boy. Looked like he ain't no more than like five foot two. Honey, really be, really be ends up getting back and forth talking about he heard that other boy was being disrespectful with the managers. He's confused, and then he's explaining himself talking about he was at the hotel and they was being. And you know how unprofessional that this set was. I can believe David's side of the story that he wasn't necessarily being disrespectful. He was just being firm, and they took it the wrong way. Because he because he came off as more so the intellectual. Everybody else was giving bad boy. He was giving a darn gone professional. And once again, there needs to be a show for the, the Davids of the world as well. Like, he doesn't fit the bad boy aesthetic. But he, we need to come out with a concept for, you know, the professionals with an edge. And call it, call it bad boy professional or something along those lines. So the, and we can have like a contest of who's the baddest boy the bad boy professional in their business and have like a a series of contests and shit and first prize winner can get like 25000 or something to invest towards their business opportunity. Like I would love to see something like that because David was giving me professional. Reek and Ken Doll was giving me professional. And then with bad boy professional you can have a combination of the cross dressers and the the butch queens and the twinks and everybody mixed in in between and call it baddie professional. You know, bad boy professional, honey. Once again, Natalie Nunn, Limo, I want my dog on payments, honey. I'm in my Kim Burrell's voice, bitch. I'm very affordable. I'm very affordable. I'm not that expensive. But moving on, yeah. Darn going, um, really darn going ass end up getting in a fight with him. And security ends up slamming down on David down to the ground. I was like, ain't this about a bitch? It was like, number one, David was defending himself. David didn't book up at darn going really be. Now, he eventually did say, well, girl, what you want to do? Now, you giving me all this raw right And you know, as soon as he said that, you know darn going, honey, old boy was already stood up like motherfucking Scooby-Doo talking about. I was like, bitch, if you don't sit your ass down. See... <laughs> He, it, it couldn't have been me auditioning. <laughs> Honey, the way that darn gone really was up like this. I was like, girl, do you want a damn Scooby snack while you sitting up here looking like you want to pounce on me like darn gone Scooby do on a darn gone bone, honey? I would have been like Drew Sador. Arf, 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 arf. Girl, do you want a goddamn Scooby snack? Sit your motherfucking darn gone Scooby do looking ass the fuck down somewhere. <laughs> Shit. I, honey, darn gone. It wouldn't have paid for me to be in there, honey. Y'all really would have had a fight on y'all hands. Well, for real, for real. Because, honey, I would have whooped darn on really B's ass and the damn security guards, child. But, honey, he done picked on poor darn going uh, David. David ain't number five, uh, five foot one. And then they got these big, heavy security guards. I was like, why y'all got three, four security guards pinning this little dude down? He ain't no more than 100 pounds. One of y'all security guards outweigh him by at least 150. It's like now, y'all getting to the point where y'all have a possible lawsuit on y'all hands. Because it's three of y'all up on this tiny boy. 
I was like, now if he turns around and darn gonna throw us a lawsuit on y'all and everything's documented on camera, don't say nothing, child. And then they're going to send him the door. I said, bitch, yeah, he better be one of the folks that come back during round two of the auditions. The way that uh, uh, really was unprofessional. Sure enough, he was. He came back during the second round of auditions. We get to that in a moment. What else stood out to me? Then we got Jakara. Honey, I thought Shakara was one of the, the show enough T girls. And once again, that's why I say we need to have BCD, honey. Bad, bad the baddest cross dresser, honey. Because, honey, she did give you know full fish teas, honey. She she was dressed like we know gutter. Like she was putting gutter K to shame. Like she was giving very much, you know, girl tea. But honey, she she made it through to the second rounds as well. Although once again, it looked like they denied her as well. But she made it to the second round. That's why I say this whole auditioning process was confusing. Cause you never knew who was darn going, um, who made it through and who didn't make it through. Now this is where the discrimination came in. Because on the second round, and I, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but on the second round of auditions. And I didn't make that in my notes. That's why I want to mention it here. Um, one boy said that there was they was 20 years old. And they said, uh-uh. Natalie said, uh-uh, you got to be at least 21 years old. But it's like, Jakari said she's only 20 years old. Or did she say she was 21? But I could have sworn that bitch said she was, uh, she was just 20. So how come they didn't darn going, um, but I guess she didn't mention her age during the second round of auditions. But it was like, if there's an age limit, how come when she doggone told Riley and them that she's 20, that there wasn't no automatically disqualified, uh, disqualification for her? That's why I said there wasn't no consistency with this bullshit that they had. They was just making up any excuse to doggone uh, have other folks go. Now, uh, why is people wanting to call me during my damn reviews? Shit. Next thing we know, we got London the baddest. I was like, oh, Lord, here we go with this baddest thing. But unlike the other two, she actually looked like she she's a baddie, honey. She ain't she ain't like this. She's more so in between, honey. She, she's a light caramel child. So, and then she looked like the light skin replica, like body proportion and everything. She was given knockoff version of Dargon Gutter K. I was like, yeah, that bitch going to instantly make it to the second round. And they're going to probably put her to the third round because she's a carbon copy of Gutter. And then Gutter K ain't even here. I, it, there were some discrepancies where they didn't want to pay Gutter K her money. So Gutter K opted out of the auditions. So I can see them very much putting her as the replacement for Gutter K. Because like I said, they needed it dragging this type of chick on the darn on show anyways that gave that gutter like aesthetic. And London the Baddest definitely flips the bill. And then we had Rick Rosa, a.k.a. Gardini. Because I was like, ain't this damn Gardini from darn on uh, chasing Atlanta? Anthony talking about take it off. I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> now, no shade. I'm not fat shaming. But I don't think nobody want to see the rose on darn on Rick Rosa, honey. Rick Rosa. I was like, uh-uh. Don't nobody want to see darn on the offspring of Rosa Parks and Rick Ross, baby. A.K.A. Rick Rosa, honey. But he darn on stripped it off. And he was darn on showcasing his confidence. I was like, okay, bitch. Go on ahead and get you a Fenty deal. But as far as bad boys, I don't know, honey. I don't know. Although, you know, if we're going to, you know, have the token plus size since they darn on head William and Anthony's darn on balloon shaped asses up in there. Hell, at least this one looked like he's about that. Like Rick Rosa looked like he could throw hands. I ain't, I don't, I ain't see what he was doing over there on chasing a, uh, Atlanta too tough because y'all know I really started in on Atlanta during season four and I seen a little bit of season three. But, honey, Rick Rosa looked like she's with the shits. Uh, like, darn on Wim the saddest. And darn on Dylan the wackiest. So, okay. And then we had several more porn stars get interviewed. Um, Curtis was at a... Um, damn, what? I was, okay, the mistypo. 
Oh, Curtis was a good sport um, through Anthony and really be shenanigans. Because, like I said, they just had the guys stripping and everything. Uh, Jonathan ended up coming through um, to see some of the auditions before he went off and did the second round. And that was basically episode one. I would include a montage of clips towards the end. That way, if YouTube decides to give a girl a copyright strike, it would be easy for me to go ahead and just, you know, cut out the extra clips at the end and y'all still get a whole content versus... I was thinking about sprinkling them throughout as I was talking about certain subjects. I would, you know, insert clips like I normally do. But I was like, uh-uh, this is Zeus Network, honey. I don't know how they get down. I was like, uh-uh, if they start striking multiple clips and I have to go through the stress of darn on going back and, you know, muting certain parts of the video clips and shit throughout the video and all that, I was like, that's going to be too tedious. Especially since I don't got my time to myself just yet until this darn on demon gets back to work. She just called. She probably stranded somewhere on the road because I don't know why she darn on jumped out the house. Didn't allow me to darn on set the GPS for this, that, and the third. So let me get on up off of here and help her out so she can get up out this damn house. But that is it, y'all. Go ahead and check out the clips at the end. The stuff that stood out to me is some of the stuff that I mentioned throughout this um, review. And I will be back with y'all soon with um, part two. Like I said, this really could have been a 10 part. They, this shit was darn on better than the damn show. But folks done to fuck the damn up, honey. Pull the fire along. But anyways, I'm gone.